We are finishing up our five-week season of creation care. So with that, we were moving through the different liturgies over the five weeks, and today we ended with enriching our worship. However, we're also using the Episcopal Supplemental Liturgies of Liturgy for Creation Care. So I invite you to follow along in your bulletin because it's not our regular words in, in the service the way we normally have it. Uh, we have, of course, Sheldon and the choir. What a gift. Thank you. Um, and I think that's probably it. I just invite you to follow along. And you'll see that I kind of ran out of the word insert. Almost everything is in your bulletin. Not quite, but almost everything. Uh, and we'll try to walk along on this. So. Let us gather ourselves together to come into the presence of God in this sanctuary, raising our voices in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. And we will stand as we are able with hymn number eight. And if your dogs or whatever pets bark, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Most high, omnipotent, good Lord, grant your people grace to renounce gladly the vanities of this world, that following the way of Blessed Francis, we may, for love of you, delight in your whole creation with perfect joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. lesson is a reading from the prophet Job. But ask the animals and they will teach you, the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare to you, who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of ever, every human being. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
This I proclaim to you, the earth, the world, the God who made the world, and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you. 
holy gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Do not worry, he said to his disciples. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn. And yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you be worrying, or can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? If then you were not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat, and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I had never heard about blessing the animals until I began attending St. Philip's in Tucson almost 20 years ago. It was a zoo. Attendance at church, literally, right? Thank you for laughing and twigging me. <laughs> Attendance then was much greater in churches, and we had all sorts of animals. We had donkeys, we had horses, we had chickens and goats, and it was holy mayhem, <laughs> right? It was outside because there was concern that perhaps in the midst of the holy mayhem, animals, animals might do their holy business inside the church. <laughs> and as we were sitting, as we were standing, singing this beautiful hymn that is such a gift from Polly and Alan. I was mindful of the fact that the pets who are in the room were so quiet and that they are being such good parishioners. And I know that some of them really do want to woof it up and yet they are present with us. They are present with us. This is a day that we call the blessing of the animals, but it is at the end of the season of creation. And the truth be told, not all of creation is our animal. Not only is it not our animal because, I don't know about you, I am not about to befriend the scorpions that enter my home. Not, I'm not about to look with love upon the rattler that may be on the road. I may indeed look at it and say, this is your home. I am the interloper and I will give it wide birth. But if we look at creation and don't consider creation to be a beloved pet in, with whom we are in relationship, where does that leave us for creation? Where does that leave us, as the lyrics of the hymn said, of being good stewards of creation? This past week in the news, there was the announcement that I believe it was 10 species have been declared formally extinct, one of which is the white-billed 
Woodpecker, I believe. Ivory. Ivoryville? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I read that and I had to put the news down. I had to put my phone down. The idea that our actions are causing the extin extinction of beloved forms of creation is deeply painful. I particularly relate to it, as you all know, I'm from Canada, as you all know, I love the cold. And I particularly relate to it when I see the images of polar bears trying to find more ice in cooler weather. That hits home for me the way that probably if we were to learn that some local animal here in the desert, a woodpecker, for example, were going extinct, or the gray wolves, which we have managed to bring back, that would hit home here for each of us in our emotional, spiritual contexts, our habitus. And yet, at the end of the epistle, it says, we too are his offspring. We too. We also. We as well. That means that we are his offspring isn't the only sentence. It means that we are his offspring, God the Creator's offspring, along with the scorpion, along with the rattler, along with our beloved pets, with the beautiful, beautiful praying mantis that was in the backyard that you heard me mention a couple of weeks ago when Miriam was helping me mow. And it was doing its little jig jaw dance up the wall, trying to get away from her lawnmower. All these wonderful components of creation. But is it just the animals? Or is it also the plants? These beautiful plants that have been gifted to us by Sally. Is it the stones? Do the stones have voices? The air, the water. We know that the water is a precious commodity. We know what's going on because we can see the images of the water lines going down in Lake Powell, in all the lakes in the desert. And we are all of us intricately woven into this. And this is what the season of creation is about. It is to raise our awareness that we are stewards of God's creation. We are not overlords. We do not have, as the old uh, scriptural word said, dominion over, as a Canadian, we have a little bit of problem with the word dominion, right? Because we are part of the British uh, dominion, right? And we got quite feisty about that back in the 80s, and we said, no, we are not being under uh, servants to Great Britain. We want our constitution brought back home so that we are equal partners and players. I'm imagining that all of creation, air, water, earth, stones, animals, are saying we want our constitution brought back home. We want to be engaged with you equally. We want to be a part of this planet in a way that means no more animals will go extinct. I know, right? Thank you. <laughs> That was an amen. <laughs> I'm going to do some translation for you here. <laughs> we want this fragile island home to succeed. My youngest is in third year engineering at the University of Arizona. And he's finally decided that he wants to do architectural engineering. He's declared his major. And I said, that's really cool. What are you going to do with that? He said, oh, I want to be a part of the, the professional community that helps to design how we go and inhabit other planets. And I went, oh, really? <laughs> Here I thought all that gaming and creating worlds on the different games was for nothing. But apparently it's so you can go and create other planet homes. He goes, yes, I think it's really important because I don't think we are going to have much of a future on this one. Two things there. Wow, a 20 year old is saying that we have messed up so badly that he does not see a long term future on this planet. Which I want to tell you, from my awareness with my young adult children, well, one of them maybe not quite so young adult anymore, but, uh, and for, with others, this is what they believe. 
that what we are bequeathing to them is a complete and utter mess. I said that at Casablanca a couple of weeks ago, and one person said, really? This is what they think? She goes, I don't hang out with young people. I, I don't have any children around. And I said, yeah, I can tell you from my kids, my kids' friends, from youth group, this is what, what I'm hearing. We are bequeathing an utter mess. So how do we look at, so I said two things. He wants to go because as a 20 year old, he's saying there's not gonna be much here to live with. And the other part of me is saying, well, um, that's really creative and you're super smart and you're really diligent. How about you figure out a way to clean up this one before we go off and reinvent, or not reinvent, and continue the wheel of pollution and degradation. And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, no, that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> we have work to do. We always have work to do. Because that is the way of the way. That is the way for Christians. God never promised that it would be easy. God promised that God would be with us in our grief, in our sorrow, in our pain, in our difficulties. God said, you want help? You need to move that manure pile? Here's a shovel. You need help? Pray. You've probably heard the joke, I've probably shared it before, the man who goes in on his lunch hour every day to the, to the church and is at the rail praying, oh Lord, let me win the lottery, let me win the lottery, let me win the lottery. Months of this goes on and finally he hears a voice. All right, all right, but would you please buy a lottery ticket? <laughs> right? We are in partnership. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit aren't magic. They're not bewitched. They're not I Dream of Genie. They're not Harry Potter. They're not the Wizards of Waverly Place or whatever the show is now. We work together. We trust in God and we lock our cards. We listen to God. We pray to God. We say, here I am. Use me. How would you use me? Oh, I really don't want to do that, God. Oh, that's what you want me to do, right? You want me to work on cleaning up this mess? Okay, baby steps, how do I do it? Okay, I turn off the water when I'm washing my hands. I turn off the water when I brush my teeth. Okay, maybe I can compost. Maybe I can reuse things. Maybe I can not throw things out so quickly, creating more garbage dumps which create methane gas. Maybe I can go online and look up resources that will help. There are ways that each of us can do something. Because the truth is, we do care. It's not that we don't care and we toss away. There are ways that are going to work for each one of us because we all have different paths and we all have different gifts and skills. And we all have different ways of coming at this. Some of us may be big on rainwater collection. Figure out how to make sure there are no mosquitoes though. Learn that one the hard way. Some of us may do composting. Some of us may feel so strongly about recycling and be so irritated by the fact that there is no recycling in Santa Cruz County at this end of it, that we may schlep it up to some place north of here to recycle. Or maybe we'll write letters and figure out and advocate for recycling. Maybe we're going to figure out ways that we can clean it up so we don't have 20 year olds look at us and say, you messed it up. so that we don't have tainted water for so many parts of the world. So that we look at our shopping habits so that we don't have need for strip mining for copper. So that we look at how we purchase. Do I really need this or am I just getting a lustful high because I'm shopping when I don't need it? Each of us addresses that in our own way. There will be days that we are successful and days we are less so. This morning, I remembered to turn the water off when I was brushing my teeth. Yesterday, I didn't. It was at the very end. I went, oh, I forgot to turn the water off. Right? So many ways we can do this. So many options. So that when we come together and we bring our beloved pets and we have these beautiful plants and we have gorgeous flowers in honor of Father Derwent, we can look at all of creation and say, 
this is my home. These, in so many different ways, are my family. And I love my family, and I will be a good steward of my family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand as we are able and sing together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, which is the God of the Father, the God of the God. Light from light, true out of the true world, to be found in the high of my being with the Father, to bring him all things to remain, for our gospel, for our salvation, to be taken out from them, a battle of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and the Lady of Men. For our sake, he was crucified and upon the Father. He suffered death and was there. On the third day he rose to him, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He even the right hand of the Lord, he had a sword in the hand of the and his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With Father and Son, peace, worship, and glory of God, it is the soul of the two great apostles. We believe in one who will come back from the last of the church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. in 
all your works. Shall we bless you, Look with favor upon all who care for the earth, the water, and the air, that riches of creation that abound for all your creatures. Shall we bless you, Make us faithful stewards of creation, wisely caring for the earth, the air, the seas, and all the life they bear. Awaken us to our responsibility to the care of creation. Forgive us our waste and pollution of creation. And strengthen us to heal wounds we have inflicted. Remember all in captivity and those who are hunted, trapped, deserted, or abused, that they may find safety in homes of loving care. Do not forget those animals who have died yet remain dear to us, that they may rejoice in their new creation. Holy God, no sparrow falls without your attention. Nothing dies that is lost to you. Nothing comes into being without your love. Give us just and compassionate hearts that we may serve the earth and all its creatures holding fast to the vision of your peaceable reign in which all will live with you eternally. Through the risen one, Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God against our fellow creatures. God of compassion, have, have mercy on us. Heal our relationship with all creation. Forgive us for our mistreatment and neglect of the creatures who share the earth with us. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for what we have done to harm them and for what we have not done to help them. Fill us with your spirit that we may care for one another. And for all your creatures, according to your will, and in the fullness of our will, through Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now we shift to the blessing of the animals. Oh, good. <laughs> if it's more comfortable for you to be seated, please do so. It is the priestly work of all God's people to give thanks for God's blessings, to ask for and lend assistance to all in need, and to stretch our hands to heal and cherish the creatures of God. This is our work of blessing. Recognizing God's love for these creatures, I invite you to lift your pets up. Not bring them forth. Well, okay, some of you might not be able to do that. Um, um, Instead of bringing them forward, I will come to you. The, the animals entrusted to your care, one by one, and to join me in the laying on of hands in prayer. So I'm going to start on this side. Wait, I'm going to start up here because we actually have a mouse. May God, your Creator and Preserver, bless, defend, heal, this day and always. Amen. I think
think that is one for which I'm grateful it's in a little box. <laughs> <laughs> I received a vote of thanks for not making her lift her up.
see the world through your eyes, so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may treasure each creature touched by your creative hand. May your bountiful blessing be upon us all, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us say together the prayer of St. Francis, attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, unity. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to the soul as to our soul, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And before we go to the peace, we are going to do birthday blessings. So we know that Father Derwood has a birthday. We missed uh, Dennis last week, and if there are any other birthdays, let's have a hoopla birthday blessing. Another birthday. Yeah. yeah, okay. I thought maybe an animal. Okay, come on. Do you want to come up or do you want us just to gather here, Jared? Whatever. You're sounding like a 20 year old. Whatever. All right. So if you have a hymnal, and not a hymnal, a book of common prayer, on page 830, come on down here, is the birthday blessing, and we're going to do number 50 for a birthday. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Derwin, Becca, and Devon, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us in the name of the all the shadows. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us. Amen. And now, my friends, the peace of the Lord that passeth all understanding be always with you. And also with you.
Uh, it's in the it's in the bulletin uh, for the beauty of the earth on page twenty eight. 